About five years ago, I attended my very first medical service trip to Lima, Peru. I shadowed a physician there where we treated patients that we saw in the most impoverished places of Lima to treat them with a finite source of antibiotics that we had. Most of the patients there experienced what they called the gripe, or the fever. And this was compromised, really, as a strep throat infection. We would treat this, typically, with antibiotics. About halfway through the day, a mother and her 22-month-old child came in, and we checked them out. And I went to reach for the antibiotics to give to the child. And the physician stopped me and said, this patient, this baby, the infection had reached her lungs. She was unable to breathe. She was not thriving. And therefore, she wouldn't make it to her second birthday. He said, I can't give her a pill. I can't give her an antibiotic. Maybe if we were in the United States, I could help her out. But there's really nothing we can do. We just have to let it go. I remember being so awestruck by this moment. And I'm going to tell you this story and bring it back later, because this was the moment that I realized that, wow, there's a problem here. And I want to get involved in fixing that problem. The problem was twofold. How could we as caregivers, myself as a medical student, and at the time pre-med, how could I say that I was going to save lives and then not be able to do anything to our most vulnerable population, our young children. And then second fold, how was this baby even exposed to such environmental exposures that caused her to have the throat infection in general? It comes from an individual level and also a community level. This experience shook me to my very core, and I committed from that point on to fight no matter what it took to make sure I understood both of those problems and approach it in the best way possible. So from there, I kind of committed to this life motto that I've had upon growing up. It's this concept that we can be happy, but not satisfied. I'm a big believer in celebrating life's wins, celebrating accomplishments, and really marking success. I think that's awesome. But I think the best place and the most opportunity that we have is if we take that success and realize, okay, how can we push that even further? Where can we reach beyond success? How can we celebrate accomplishments as a marker and find that as an opportunity for new learning? How can we appreciate beauty that is right in front of us, either in a child or in an instance or an experience, and create something even more incredible out of that? I was able to understand this and kind of complex this through research. Science research is what I fell in love with. And it was a way for me to create, to innovate, and become an innovator to solve life daily problems. I want to talk a little bit about the distinction between invention and innovation. I call myself an innovator. Per Merriam-Webster, invention is the creation of something new versus innovation, which is taking something that already exists, identifying its problems or its room for improvement, and doing that. I'm an innovator. I take what I see in the world, I take those experiences that I witness, and I improve them to the very best of my ability. While I was at the University of Connecticut, I was an environmental science major and got really interested in renewable energy. I fell in love with this concept of piezoelectricity. It's a material that, when vibrated or put under mechanical stress, generates electricity. It can be used as a form of renewable energy to harness vibrations around the world. Because I was interested in medicine at the time, I had learned about patients who have pacemakers. Patients with pacemakers have a lead-based battery in their pacemaker that every five to seven years needs to be replaced or recharged. So patients who have pacemakers have to undergo surgery every five to seven years. And that really isn't such a great prognosis. So with my background in renewable energy, environmental energy, I use polyvinylidene fluoride. It's a thin film, micro film, that when vibrated or put under mechanical stress, generates electricity. And I harness the wind emanating from the human lungs, particularly in the trachea, 
to take the wind energy and use that vibration to generate enough electricity to power pacemakers. UConn gave me many grants and many opportunities to continue this research throughout college. And that is where I fell in love with the intersectionality between environmental science and medicine. Just like that experience of the baby, understanding the environment in which people live and what they're exposed to, and what we can do as healthcare providers to tackle that and come up with great medical solutions. But I still wasn't satisfied. I had a great trajectory. I knew I wanted to apply to medical school. I was happy where I was and I loved the work that I was doing, but something was still missing. So what did I do? I became Miss Connecticut. <laughs> and everybody's response to me is just that. Why did you become Miss Connecticut? I competed in Atlantic City last year, September of 2018. I spent all of last year before uh, attending medical school as Miss Connecticut. And so many people would ask me, why are you doing that? I remember one time I was talking to a mentor of mine as I was applying to medical schools. And her question to me was, why would someone like you do something like this? Why would you do a pageant? My resume was already complete. But why did I get involved? And this is exactly why. Throughout my year as Miss Connecticut, I appeared in the community over 400 times. I visited over 100 schools, and I talked to them about science. Because I truly believe that our next generation of scientists and innovators come from our young people. They're the people that will attack those questions, attack the unknown with an unadulterated curiosity. And if I can get involved in telling a young person that, hey, you can do this, you can make a meaningful contribution to the scientific community, that's exactly where I want to be for the rest of my life. So throughout my year as Miss Connecticut, I promoted women in STEM, inspiring that next generation of innovators. In that last picture, that was a school in Hebron, Connecticut that I visited. And later, I received an email from a parent of a first grader. And she emailed me saying, thank you for coming into my school. My daughter came home that next day and said, mom, I want to be a scientist and a princess. And I think if I've accomplished anything in my years, Miss Connecticut, it's exactly that that you can be a scientist and a princess, that you can do both. Both have dignity, both have importance, and both can make a great contribution to your community. So that's where it is. I think success lies beyond the self. For me, becoming that pursuit of satisfaction comes from sharing what I've learned, sharing my experience with others. Because someday those little kids that I talk to in school will stand on my shoulders, on my scientific contributions, and make even greater ones. They will do and provide a future that we can't even imagine yet. And that is the importance of sharing, just like platforms like this and like the Miss America program, sharing our knowledge and inspiring others around us. So now I'm at the University of Connecticut. As a medical student, I'm in my first year, and I can honestly say it is the best experience of my life. I spend all of my days studying cases, talking to patients, developing my communication and nonverbal and verbal cues, because it's so important as a patient and as a provider to have that relationship. The Yukon School of Medicine does a phenomenal job in their curriculum about promoting patient-centered care. Because like that 22-month-old baby, she needed someone that could have looked at what her environmental exposures were and treated her in a way that was going to be effective for her. No one of us in this room or throughout the world experiences disease the same way. We each experience disease based on our exposures and what we're involved in very differently. And that has a huge outcome to how we deal with getting healthy. 
So for me, as a patient and as a provider in future years, I want to make sure that I'm centered on the patient, on the individual and their experience, and to make sure that they are getting the exact tailored care to their needs. And that won't be the same per every patient that I see. While I was Miss Connecticut, I got the opportunity to judge a fourth and fifth grade speech competition. The speech competition task for these fourth and fifth graders was to reflect on Martin Luther King Jr.'s quote, all labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. I took away from my year as a pageant girl and as Miss Connecticut this idea, that we don't pursue excellence, we do excellence all that we do here and now, be excellent now. We pursue that satisfaction. We continue to learn, but we don't let up on being excellent. No matter what we do or what we set our minds to, do it with excellence. Because then that provides that future and those seeds for our future leaders, future innovators to, to promote a greater future than we can even imagine. And that's where I'm at. If I can do anything in my years growing up, it's to make sure that I have planted the seeds for our future generation and our scientists. And from there, hopefully someday, I'll be satisfied. Thank you.